Let's come and check it out now. Holy! Now, Meg the Mule, aka Meg the Stallion, don't we love her? Now, ladies and gentlemen, the great thing about Meg is that she contradicts herself at every turn, okay? Not too long ago on social media, after going off on a rant, also accusing me, academics, of being on Tori's payroll, she said, I ain't gonna say nothing more about this. We gonna see in court, okay? Now, she's going back on that word because she's back to talk about this again. This time, actually, Wack 100 predicted this. She did a sit down with Gail King, actually giving new details about what happened when Tori allegedly shot her. Now, this is her recount. I wish I could play the clip, but I can't. You know how that goes. It's CBS content. However, she gave us some new details saying that they were arguing in the car. She wanted to get out. She basically hopped out. And basically, she recounts or she says, Tori shot at her like over the window of the car. Okay, so it seems like she's saying that Tori was inside the car and he shot outside, which she was at, and he said, dance, bit, dance. Okay, now, few things. Previously, she definitely said, um, my back was turned. So now, she could tell you the direct positioning of the shooter. However, before, she said her back was turned. Now, she also said people don't believe her and people think she's lying, but then in the same interview, she admitted, hey, when the police first pulled up, I lied. She said she told the cops that she didn't get shot, that she actually stepped on glass. She then said later she changed her story, and when asked why she lied, she said, uh, George Floyd got killed, and I didn't want the police to kill all of us. Okay, makes sense. Now, she also says after she got shot, and by the way, she said it was multiple shots that were fired. She said after she looked down after the shots were fired, she saw blood. She said she fell to her knees, started crawling to, a, to, to someone's driveway, and she said basically... Uh, Tori at that point looked at her and everybody else saying, I'll offer y'all a million dollars each if you don't tell. Interesting timing. She's crawling, bleeding out. And the first thing Tori allegedly says is, yo, I'll give y'all a million dollars if y'all never tell people about this. Keep in mind for somebody to shoot at you, just think about that type of mindset. You would imagine that Tori would have snapped. However, as soon as the bullets hit her, allegedly he came to his senses and started offering million dollar hush fees okay let's keep believing that now she also says and by the way this might be true because again i haven't seen this part of the discovery <laughs> judge send it over um kelsey which is the best friend accused tori of shooting uh meg because she texted a bodyguard to say hey come get us basically tori shot meg interesting Okay, now I have nothing to rebut that. That's an interesting thing that will definitely be played out in court. Now, the best friend is really interested in this, okay? And I'm going to get back to the best friend again because the last thing that Meg said that was of importance to me, okay, was Meg said, yo, well, uh, 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 me and Tori never had a sexual relationship. Interesting. Now, Tori said different, but also the best friend has said different. The best friend is actually on tape saying, Meg, you was effing with Tori behind my back. Now I want y'all to look at this audio and I want y'all to come back to me. Come to find out, I come to find out your ass was fucking with a nigga behind my back that I was on first. And that ain't right because you supposed to be my best, you supposed to be my best friend. We laugh at bitches that do that shit to each other. We, we not supposed to do that shit to each other. So stop playing with me. And I don't want to go back and forth on the internet. I don't want to know it. I don't, I don't care whatever you think you got on me. Expose the shit. Because there's nothing that you can expose that I won't, I won't hold myself accountable for. Accountability. You need to learn how to hold yourself accountable for shit. This shit. I don't even know why it's going this far. I don't understand to this day, y'all. Y'all ask me these questions. I don't have the answers. I don't have the fucking answers. Because people don't know how to be mature and talk like adults. Y'all can't say that I ain't trying to have no real conversation. Y'all can't say that. And really, I, I'm not the one that should have been having, y'all should have been having conversations with me. Y'all owe me a fucking conversation. Now, I know some of y'all might not be the smartest or the sharpest, but if you listen to the best friend, it don't seem like the best friend is saying, hey, Meg didn't F Tori. She's saying, yo, Meg, you F that dude. Come on now. Now, it's really hard for me to believe that her and Tori had no sexual relationship or sexual relations and they were dealing with each other, allegedly, for about, like, six months. But, okay, 
I believe it because it's believe all women. Now, this is where uh, uh, um, the, the, the end comes in, where I realize why Meg is doing this. And if you watch the last minute of that interview, it's about 12 minutes. Meg says, I am the victim. Meg is only doing this not to hope that Tory gets convicted. In fact, I would probably suggest the other case. I think she thinks maybe Tory might skate. I don't know if he did it or not. I'm just saying legally he might skate and she needs that victim push to do and accomplish certain things in her career. So because, again, whether Tory's convicted or not, we're probably still not going to know what exactly happened unless we see a video. She's getting out and she is securing the victimhood quickly. OK, she made it a point to end that interview with basically kind of lamenting why people don't see her as a victim and also saying I'm a victim because of those things. I look at all of this kind of funny. Also, remember, Tori got a gag order, by the way. I don't know if I told you, but I told people on Twitch, Meg, uh, in, in, uh, um, also in accordance with the prosecutor, wrote a whole lot of documents about me in court saying that I was getting information from Tory, not knowing that I got it from Rock Nation. Okay, thank you, Meg. And basically, they were pretty much like, yo, in cahoots about, yo, let's keep Tory quiet. However, Meg is doing interviews without her lawyer. Basically, he's trying to claim and say, yo, I'm the victim, which again, no problem with that. But it seems very concerted that she's trying to use this to push more than the narrative that, yo, Tory hurt me. It feels like it's, hey, for me to win, this needs to happen. And it's kind of unfortunate because I do think Meg, at the root of all things, she's more talented than um, someone who needs to have the victim role to succeed. I think that's the saddest part of it all. If Tory shot her or not, hopefully we actually do figure out the truth in court. And if he did, send his ass to jail. And if he didn't, Meg, your career finna be canceled. I will tell you that. All right. You guys get in comments. Let me know what you think about this. I don't know if you guys in the interview, but go watch it somewhere else. Get the Googling. You'll find it. Get on my Instagram. If you're, yeah, follow, follow my Instagram, damn it. You probably see some clips there. But other than that, it's your boy DJ Academics. Make you guys like, definitely subscribe. Meg, she did shed some tears. She's a bad actor. But damn it, the tears did come. Okay. Is she telling the truth? You be the judge. Get in the comments. Make sure you guys like them. Subscribe to Boy Academics. 